Kieran has spent the last four years as a zombie, but through medication, is deemed ready to re-enter society. The guilt of what he did when he was untreated and the uncertainty of how his family and community will treat him once he returns make him question whether he is ready or not. In an empty supermarket, a woman is suddenly attacked by a female zombie. She tries to escape but stumbles over her cart and falls to the floor. She shoots the zombie, but it continues toward her. As she tries to escape, a male zombie, Kieran, grabs her from behind. In the present, Dr. Shepard shakes Kieran Walker out of his violent flashback and asks him if he had another involuntary recurrent memory. Kieran says they've become more vivid recently, and the doctor assures him that that's a good sign. It means the circuitry in his brain is connecting again, much like a rebooting computer. Kieran fears he might not be ready to re-enter society, but Dr. Shepard says his feelings are precisely why he's ready. He claims Kieran is lucky to respond positively to the medication, unlike those that don't, which the government has had to take care of. The young man doubts his family looks forward to seeing him, mainly because he was a zombie who hurt people. The doctor corrects him and tells him to refer to himself as a partially deceased syndrome sufferer and that what he did in his untreated state wasn't his fault. After the checkup, Kieran is given his supply of contact lenses and cover-up moose. In Kieran's hometown, Rorton, graffiti that reads Beware Rotters is on a bridge. Meanwhile, Vicar Audie leads a procession of townsfolk where he proclaims that those that perished were blessed to be spared from evil. In the Walker household, Kieran's parents, Sue and Steve, entertain potential buyers of their home. Jem, Kieran's sister, plays loud music from her room, where she lays on the bed while wearing a human volunteer force armband. The HVF is a volunteer militia group that hunted zombies during the Rising, an event that occurred four years ago when the dead began rising from their graves. Afterward, the potential buyers declined the walker's offer because they want a more remote living situation. Sue and Steve assume that the couple is getting ready to take back in a PDS sufferer like they are. Minutes later, Sue and Steve remind Jem that they'll pick up Kieran the next day, and their daughter has no plans to come with them. Steve tells his wife that their daughter will come around to having their son back home eventually. At the facility, Kieran joins other PDS sufferers about to be released. He shares his recurrent memory of his last attack on the woman in the supermarket and the crippling guilt he carries. Alex tells him that he would have rotted if he hadn't fed while in his untreated state. Alex encourages him to let go of the guilt because the humans never hesitated to shoot them under the guise of defending humanity. The group is reminded to wear their contact lenses and apply their cover-up moose once released. Kieran then shares he's looking forward to seeing his little sister Jem again. In a bar, Bill and the other HVF members welcome Jem and order her a drink. Bill gets annoyed at the bartender, who refuses to give them free drinks despite the poster behind her saying that HVF veterans drink for free. The bartender says the sign will get taken down soon because it's been years since the rising and people are moving on. Bill exclaims that Rorton's sacrifice should never be forgotten as he raises Jem's arm and the bar's patrons cheer them on. In the HVF headquarters, Bill passes out assigned routes and walkie-talkies to the members. They ask him what they should do if they encounter a rotter on medication, and he reiterates that they are still rotters no matter what. The anniversary of the rising draws near, and the group raises their glasses to their fallen comrades. In the facility, Alex hands Kieran a note with a website of the undead prophet written on it and tells him to visit it once he's free. Suddenly, music starts playing from the speakers alerting the patients that it's time for their shots. On the way, Kieran sees Alex sniff a substance and asks him what it is, but his friend ignores his query. Once it's Alex's turn to get the shot, Kieran worriedly watches his friend stumble toward Dr. Shepard. The doctor administers the shot to the base of Alex's neck when the young man's eyes turn black. Dark liquid spills from his mouth and he attacks one of the nurses. Immediately, the workers subdue the rabid young man with a taser. That evening, Kieran and a few other PDS sufferers are placed onto a truck and taken to the treatment facility. The following day, Sue and Steve leave to pick Kieran up, and a nosy neighbor, Ken, watches them leave in their car. In the treatment facility, Facility, Kieran gets up from bed and places his contacts in his eyes. When Sue and Steve drive into the facility, they are pleasantly surprised that there are no barbed wires or armed guards. Minutes later, Kieran is taken to see his parents, and his mother breaks down hysterically. His father explains that they are glad he looks well because the doctor told them he might look different. Meanwhile, in the Rorton Town meeting, Vicar Audi remains firm in his disagreement with the government's efforts to release the PDS sufferers. Then he introduces the minister. The minister explains the PDS domicile care initiative to the crowd.
crowd and how the newly released patients are shielded from harm by the Protection Act. The crowd boos the minister and asks him who will protect them once one of the sufferers becomes rabid again. The minister says the ones to be released will be legally required to take the medication, and there will be protocols when a PDS sufferer becomes violent. The crowd's protests force the minister off the stage, and the government official leaves. On the drive home, Kieran sees graffiti with HVF written on it and asks his parents what it is, but they don't give him an answer. As they enter the town, Sue and Steve see parishioners walking toward them and tell Kieran to hide under a blanket in the back seat. Ken approaches the car and asks if he, Shirley, and Philip can hitch a ride home. Ken opens the door to the back seat despite Sue and Steve insisting that they have things there. Fortunately, Shirley calls Ken over, and the Walker family drives off. Later, Ken's wife, Maggie, sees Sue and Steve help Kieran into the house from her window. Inside, Kieran asks them why he had to hide since, according to them, things in Rorton have improved. Steve says things are slowly getting better, but they must take certain precautions. In his bedroom, Kieran sees his paintings on the wall and notices that his parents kept everything just as he had left it. Later, Shirley visits them and tells Sue she knows Kieran is home. Sue lets her in, and she informs them that she's volunteered to be a PDS community care officer and was trained to administer the shot. When she assembles the device, Shirley teaches Sue and Steve how to insert the syringe into the hole at the base of Kieran's neck. After the shot, Kieran convulses for a few seconds and has another recurrent memory of the incident in the supermarket. Sue and Steve ask Shirley what exactly the medicine does, and Kieran says the neurotriptyline artificially stimulates neurogenesis of glial cells. He can no longer produce the glial cells, which are vital for proper brain function. Moments later, Shirley asks to speak with Sue privately. She hands the mother a taser and instructs her to use it if she notices Kieran acting aggressively. A new substance on the streets, Blue Oblivion, can have severe effects if taken by PDS sufferers. Shirley advises Sue to give her a call if she thinks Kieran is using the substance. At the parish council meeting, Philip supports banning any Halloween festivities because he believes the costumes might distress some community members, especially after dealing with real-life monsters for the past four years. Later, Philip apologizes to the vicar for speaking up during the meeting, and the older man tells him he asked to meet with him privately regarding a different matter. The vicar says Philip's mother, Shirley, is lying lying about working in the hospice because he hasn't seen her there in months. He asks Philip to find out what new line of employment his mother is in. In the Walker residence, Kieran joins his parents for dinner, and he tells them he no longer eats food, but Sue asks him to play along. Kieran picks up his utensils and pretends to eat the food. Shortly after, Jem comes in through the front door and stops in her tracks when she sees Kieran. She defiantly announces that she won't be staying in the house as long as her brother is there. Hurt by his sister's words, Kieran leaves the dining table and heads to his room. In the bedroom, Kieran gets a box from under his bed and inside are pictures of himself and his best friend Rick, Bill's son. In Bill's house, he and his wife Janet place a birthday cake next to Rick's pictures, one of which is their son in a soldier's uniform. In Shirley's house, Philip sees a file of Rorton's PDS cases on his mother's computer. He tries to unlock the password-protected file but is unsuccessful. Suddenly, Shirley catches him using her laptop and asks him what he's doing. He lies and says he's looking at adult websites, and his mother believes him. That evening, Kieran dreams about eating the woman in the supermarket's brains. He wakes up and sees the woman standing next to his bed but realizes it's Jem. Jem is still wary of Kieran and asks him to tell her something only Kieran would know. He tells her about how she tiptoed for 9 months when she was 11 years old, and no doctor could figure out why she kept doing it. He says he was the only one who knew why, because Jem didn't want to be noticed and tiptoed so she wouldn't make any noise. Then, Kieran reminds his sister that he then made her a hardcore metal mix CD because he knew it would help her out. After hearing her brother's answer, Jem unleashes her anger at him for not leaving a note when he took his own life. He says he only wanted to disappear after he heard of Rick's passing because he believed it was his fault. Jem argues that Rick died in the war in Afghanistan, but he insists it was his fault Rick joined the army. Infuriated, Jem hurls a glass at her brother and refuses to accept his apology before storming off to her room. The next day, Steve and Kieran play board games in the living room. Meanwhile, Jem is at her post at the train station. Later, Kieran searches for the Undead Liberation Army website and watches a man in a skeleton 
Mask welcomed the site's visitors by saying he understands how they feel because he was once where they are now. The man maintains that PDS sufferers have a purpose, and they are redeemed from the earth and will be blessed. Suddenly, Steve enters the room, so Kieran quickly closes the browser. Kieran then pretends to check the weather report online when his father asks him what he's doing. At Vicar Audie's home, Bill receives an envelope containing information about a reassimilated PDS sufferer in their community. Afterward, Bill returns home and grabs a gun and tells Janet that there is a rotter amongst them. Outside the house, Janet fearfully watches her husband drive away. At the train station, Jem hears Bill's voice tell another HVF member to meet him at the woods entrance. Jem knows this is near their house and quickly runs home. At the Walker house, Jem barges through the door and tells her family that the HVF found out about Kieran and is on their way to get him. Immediately, the family members arm themselves with a cricket bat with nails, a chainsaw, and a gun. Steve tells Jem to hide her brother to keep him safe, so Jem takes him to his room. Minutes later, Bill and the other HVF members arrive in front of the walker's house. Their doorbell rings, and Steve sees Dean at the front door asking for Jem. Steve calls for Jem, and she calmly joins Dean and the other HVF members on the street. From his bedroom window, Kieran watches the HVF members drag Ken's wife, Maggie, a PDS sufferer, out of the house from across the street. Bill makes Maggie kneel on the ground while Ken begs the man to spare his wife. Bill aims his gun at Maggie, who cries as she pleads with the man. Eventually, Bill lowers his weapon, and Ken thanks him profusely. Moments later, Bill orders Maggie to remove her contact lenses, and she does as he says. When she looks up at Bill, he sees her white zombie eyes, walks around the woman, and shoots her head without a second thought. Jem is horrified at what transpired as Ken runs to his wife's body and wails mournfully. Later, Jem returns to the house and shakes her head when Sue asks her if she's alright. Then, Sue hugs her distraught daughter. That evening, Bill arrives back in his house and sees a uniformed soldier sitting next to Janet. His wife breaks the news that they've found Rick. Bill hopefully asks her if their son's been found alive. But the color drains out of his face when she says that Rick is only partially alive. In Kieran's bedroom, Steve tells his son everything will be alright. Moments later, Kieran walks down the hall and sees Jem place the gun under her pillow. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.